So I've just finished work on a Python plugin that adds a flow paintbrush into Cinema 4D. You can see here that uh, it paints a flow map to a vertex color tag. Um, it's disabled currently because there, we don't have a mesh selected, a, a polygon object selected to paint to. If I select this object, now it's enabled. Uh, if I have a procedural, I can't paint to that. But if I select it here with my polygon object, I can start to paint on the object immediately without having applied a vertex map. It will create a vertex color tag and it will name it UV Flow Map 1. And then if I have that selected, the, the polygon object and the tag, I can continue to add and paint to that tag. And so what we're painting here essentially is, is a flow map. It stores information about how the mouse was moving relative to the UV space uh, of the mesh. Um, so that's specific to the coordinate mode. So if I'm in world mode, it'll actually paint in world coordinates. But generally, you're going to find that the UV mode is more useful. There's also two blend modes. There's add and normal. Normal, essentially, if I paint over the same area again and again, it's not going to increase in intensity. Um, and it doesn't blend with what was underlying it. It doesn't add to it, it doesn't accumulate. If I go to add, we can go over the same area again and again, and it gets brighter. If we go the opposite direction, it gets dimmer until it becomes negative. Generally, um, add is going to be most useful for creating UV distortions, and we can look at what that might look like with this material here. I'll add a vertex attribute node to look up this flow map data. I'm going to plug that into the offset of this texture. Now, if we preview this here, I can start to, with the polygon object selected, I can start to paint and distort the texture. This does respond to pressure, so do a little less pressure here. We can hold shift and smooth out the vectors. Or we can hold control and actually paint them back down to zero. So holding control is a way to reset so there's no offset. Let's get some good looking well, maybe not good looking, but some, some very noticeable distortion in here. And we can also, if I add an OSL shader here, I'm going to navigate to my blur OSL. We can use these vectors in the vector blur direction vector of the blur. If I hook this up, the UV offset up here, we're going to initially we're going to lose that distortion. It has to compile the OSL shader first, but we're going to lose the distortion and we're going to get a uniform blur. And it's uniform because the direction mode we're in is anisotropy. We want to go to vector blur. But now we don't see much, so we need to increase our strength. Let's go big. And now we have a blur based on the directions you painted on into this vertex color tag. So those are both pretty cool, I think, individually. Distortion, blur. But you can also add these offsets together.
and get distortion and blur. Control them separately. There's a fun little um, property on the in the vector blur section called center that basically changes the center of the blur along the vector. So you can this goes from negative one to one if you slide the slider, but you can actually click in here and go outside of that range as well. So we can go pretty far negative or positive. Some interesting effects. All right, it's looking good. Well, I think you can see that it's doing something at the very least. <laughs> so I'm going to start painting a new uh, map here. And this new map is not active in the shader, so we're not seeing anything update yet. But I'm just going to paint kind of randomly, get something going here, and then for our vertex attribute, I will drag the new map in. And that's what we've painted. You can smooth it out a little bit. Uh, what we can also do, we can create a, a new vertex color tag, and we'll call this flow blend. On the tag, we can say use fields, and in fields, we will drag our two painted flow maps in here. And then back on the material, for the vertex attribute, we'll use the flow blend. Um, immediately, it looks incorrect. And if you look over here at the map, you might notice this big dark area is where it looks incorrect. This is because by default, the fields are going to clamp. So you're, this is going to, the values coming out of here are going to be clamped from zero to one. Our vectors use negative values in addition to positive values, and they use values potentially well above one. So we're going to disable this clamp, and now we get the result we were expecting. We can also, we can now we can blend between these two flow maps. We can also set this to add. And then if we want, we could add a mask here. Maybe use a time. Set it to sign. And then get this automatic periodic blending between the two the two flows maybe maybe let's paint another one oh got to make sure we're not using the standard paint tool where you want to use the flow paint brush so let's Paint something in here, something different. And let's add that as another map. Oh, I've got the blend. Had the blend vertex color map selected, I can't paint it to that because it's using fields. Sometimes when you're working with new workflows, <laughs> gotta learn new ways to work. Um, all right. So now on this one, let's copy this mask up. Can't copy the mask, copy the time up. Add a new mask. And on this one, we're going to change the rate a little bit. And maybe add a little offset. So now we have three, and they're blending with different 
uh, periods. Um, you can even set this to normal, maybe. So we're going to get kind of interesting different results as we progress through here. Take a look at what it might look like if these are both set to add. Anyway, it's got, uh, I think there's a lot of interesting potential here. Um, I would encourage you to try it out, play with it. Let me know what you think.